You know, when I when I mentioned that, you know, it's it's been an interesting time in media. When you go back five years ago uh, to you know 2017 or so. Uh, and you start in the business. Since then, we've had multiple mega mergers. We've had new services that have launched, new services that have been shut down quickly after launch. Uh, we had production disruption, you know, entire productions, you know, being shut down, obviously, uh, during the beginning of the pandemic. And, you know, that's a lot of change to happen in that period of time and, and fairly dramatic. You know, how have, um, you know, the changes over that period you know, been felt by Roku and and by your teams, and, and how have you had to navigate you know that incredibly disruptive period? Absolutely, great question. It is a long time uh, in the streaming business. The first takeaway is that there's more gray in my beard than there was five years ago. Certainly because of all this change, but it's been a lot of fun along the way. Uh, and so, if I had to break it down, you know, I think I've been maybe now in sort of the fourth generation or sort of fourth era of streaming, uh, as I would call it, and and how how I've seen it from my vantage point here at Roku. So first generation streaming, when I first joined Roku, it was interesting, but not necessarily valuable to most in the traditional media business. We were like a tchotchke, something you play with, but not super valuable uh, in aggregate. And at that time, it was really sort of traditional media was using streaming as just sort of dropping the cable experience onto the streaming platforms with TV everywhere. So we quickly realized, and this is, again, exceptions with Netflix and YouTube and Amazon that were really pioneers in the streaming business, but really mainstream, that's what it was, and that wasn't incredibly successful. We went to sort of second generation where channels models started to evolve, which is basically like cable add-on subscriptions, and that was maybe HBO and Showtime or in Amazon channels and generating streaming usage that way. Third generation or third era was really end of 2019, when Disney Plus launched. And that was sort of the watershed moment in the business where Disney came out right out of the gates, incredibly successful, and really defined the era of direct to consumer streaming, saying we can also become as successful or Netflix like going direct to consumer and streaming. And that ushered in this whole era of traditional media launching these direct to consumer services, saying I'm gonna take all my content, make it exclusively available on my app, and go direct to consumer. Well, that turned out to be a tough business unless your name is in Disney with that sort of catalog. And so that sort of brought us to today, sort of this fourth generation of streaming, which is much more of a multifaceted approach as partners really look to make a profitable business within streaming. And so I think partners now are evaluating direct consumer apps or channels. They're looking at premium subscriptions or Amazon channels models to get additional and incremental value. They're looking at fast as this business model to generate new audience, new revenue, they're looking at licensing out some of their content in their library, knowing that they maybe don't need to have all of their content exclusively in their own direct-to-consumer channels. So all of these different touch points now, I think partners are evaluating to build up to a profitable and sustainable model as the streaming business continues to evolve.